What's going on everyone LA Sports back with another video. In this video I'm going to be doing my first um, seven round New York Giants mock draft. Well realistically it's a six round mock because we don't have a seventh round pick but we're going to call it a seven round mock for the New York Giants. This is the first one of the year. I usually do about three maybe even four um, depends but more than likely I'll do three um, and then uh, you know I'll do three uh, NFL-wide first-round mock drafts, um, but this is 1.0. Um, it's a little bit late. I did some videos on the draft about like my dream scenario and uh, what I would like the Giants to do in the draft and some hypotheticals on certain players, but uh, this is going to be mock draft 1.0, so let's get right into it, guys. This year, I'm going to be doing a little bit different. I'm going to do two... Um, in one video, one that I would do if I were picking, and then one that I think, uh, a route that I think will go. Um, so I'm going to start off with what I would prefer, and that is trade back, trade number five, or oh, um, trade number five to the Vikings along with 79, um, and receive number 12, a first rounder next year, number 44 this year, and a fourth rounder next year that's my first mock trade and that would move you back to 12 and then that brings you to seven so at seven I would go Tyler Linderbaum the center out of Iowa um I mean this guy's a beast there's nothing else that needs to be said the Giants need help on the offensive line um it, it's the biggest need of this football team and it's not close the offensive line improving is going to make every single piece of this offense improve whether that's a wide receiver a tight end a running back the quarterback every piece um, to this offense and it's going to help out the defense because the longer the offense is on the field the better the defense ultimately is so um, overall we need offensive linemen a lot of people say you know go with two I personally would rather go with one and then best defensive player available which is what I'm going to do in this mock so at seven I'm going Tyler Linderbaum and then at 12 with that Vikings pick <clears throat> after the trade back, um, I would go to Kobe Dean, the linebacker out of Georgia. This guy, for me, if you're not getting one of the top uh, two edge rushers, um, this guy's insane. I mean, he, he's crazy. Uh, he was one of the biggest pieces to that Georgia defense, that top Georgia defense that led them to winning the national title. Uh, and Kobe Dean is a guy you don't want to mess with. He's a He's a guy who's going to change the middle part of that defense. Um, and Don Wink Martindale, um, I think he's he's really, he would really be able to do something special with a type guy like N'Kobe Dean. So I think N'Kobe Dean out of Georgia, the linebacker, at number 12 overall would make a ton of sense. So that's what I would do. Like I said, I would go in the first round with the first two picks. I preferably, I preferably would trade back um, with five or seven doesn't matter five will probably get you more value and then uh, with the two picks I would go offensive lineman and then best defensive player available but it's it's interesting right now to see who the best defensive player is um, maybe maybe the Giants go Stingley because we we might need a cornerback if we cut Bradbury it's it's definitely gonna be interesting um, but as of right now these are my you know arguably my two favorites uh, in the first round of this year's draft so this is what I would do in the first round at seven, Linderbaum, and then with the fifth pick, trade back, and then take N'Kobe Dean at 12 with that Minnesota Vikings pick. And now, since we made that trade back, we also have a another second round pick um, because we traded a third round pick to get a second round pick. So it's, it's essentially a double trade back, uh, kind of, which is interesting. Well, it's a trade back and a trade up. Um, but... With the, the, the Giants' second-round pick, 37 overall, I would go with a tackle, Bernard Raymond out of Central Michigan. The Giants are going to need help at every piece of the O-line. Um, but if they go with a, uh, you know, a non-tackle, like a center or a guard uh, in the first round, that would mean you would have to go with tackle. You almost would have to uh, go tackle in the second round or, or the third round, for sure the third round. Um, so I think this is, you know, an interesting route, um, in my opinion. Um, so, I, like I said, the Giants need help on the O-line. This is a guy who can come in uh, and, and potentially be a starting tackle. Um, and, and at you know, worst-case scenario, you 
maybe pick up a guy in free agency who's capable of playing a year or, you know, playing back and forth with, uh, you know, Raymond and, and, and you kind of see where he goes. But usually when you're getting linemen in the second round, um, you know, they have a chance to be pretty good. I mean, he's, you know, ranked uh, as the 19th best prospect in the draft. So if you can get him in the second round, um, you know, he was available when I did the mock. So if you can get him there, I think it's a really, really nice pick. And then at 44, um, with that Vikings pick, I'm going to have the Giants moving up. Um, they trade up. Uh, they trade number, f- or sorry, they trade back again. They trade 44 for 52 and 84. So that gives you, uh, you move eight spots back and you get another uh, third round pick. Um, so interesting scenario. Uh, again, this is what I would do. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. You'll see what I think is going to happen later. And then you get Daniel uh, Falele, the tackle out of Minnesota, at 52 overall. So you double down at the tackle. Um, you you would double down at the tackle um, in that second round. So that means three of your first four picks are offensive linemen. Right there, you're moving towards fixing the O line, which is a that would be a huge help. I mean, if you can you know, draft two tackles, a center who's going to step in right away and be a, you know, star center. Um, you know, I kind of look at Linderbaum like a Creed Humphrey type guy. He comes in as an immediate impact, and you can get Nicobe Dean on top of that, a guy who can really make that defense something real special. Um, so this is what I would do. Um, and then in the third round, number 69 overall, I would go Jeremy Rutker, the tight end out of Ohio State. Of course, the Giants need help at the tight end spot. You know, with Evan Ingram, um, you know, more than likely walking uh, in free agency, um, Kyle Rudolph is going to be cut. There, you know, there, there shouldn't be any reason he's on the team next year. He, he will be cut. And then, of course, you have a decision with Caden Smith, but he can't come in and be a starter. And I think Jeremy Rudker is one, uh, you know, he's one of the top tight ends in the class. And I, I would make the argument that he is the best in the class, so... Definitely uh, would be a very good tight end to get there in the, in the third round. Um, so interesting there, but that's what I would do. I would take Jeremy uh, Ruckert, uh, the tight end out of Ohio State. And then you, you have another pick in 15 picks, and I would go at 84 overall. Boye Mafe, the edge rusher out of Minnesota. This guy's a beast, and I mean, I think that this guy might not even make it here. Um, you know, the way he's moving up draft boards, it's crazy. Um, and, and we still got two months to go. So, you know, maybe he's a second round pick for all we know, but he would fill a need. Um, him and Aziz Ojolari in that Donwick Martindale scheme, they would be really, really good together. Um, that, that would be a really nice, uh, that would be a really, really nice uh, edge rusher duo. Um, and, and you can, you could do a lot of things um, with these guys uh, on the edge. So I think Boy Mafe. Um, is really good. He fills a, fills a need, much like Jeremy Rucker, um, the t- tight end, much like uh, the ta- the two tackles, much like Linderbaum. So the Giants really in this draft, they need to focus on you know getting what they need, play- positions they need. Um, you know maybe maybe they go best player available with some of these picks, but I think they really got to focus on. Um, you know, what's the biggest need of this football team? And I think that's what Joe Shane and Brian Dable do as they attack this draft. I really do. So, um, you know, if they can get, you know, with the first um, six picks, if that's what they can get, I mean, the Giants are really, really sitting nicely. Uh, You get some big time needs and you get some, you know, players that can come in and have impacts early in their careers. And then um, in the fourth round, 109 overall, I got them taking the running back out of Georgia, James Cook, Dalvin Cook's brother. He is, he's really good. And, and now we're seeing a lot of running backs being selected later, um, and, and a lot of them have success. So I think this is a guy, I think they should cut Devontae Booker. There's no reason to keep him here. You could save a couple million dollars, a little over $2 million by cutting him. The Giants are, of course, strap, strapped tight for cash. So I think that makes sense. And then you know, in the draft, you, you take one. It's a much cheaper option. It's a guy who's younger, uh, more upside. So that's what I would do here. Um, in the fourth round, I take James Cook, the running back, out of Georgia. And now the Giants are down to three more picks. Um, and at in the fifth round, at 146, I got them going Kellen D. Deich, uh, the tackle out of Arizona State again. We need tackles. 
Um, he's ranked a lot better than the than a fifth round pick. He's ranked, you know, he's, he's mocked to go in the third or fourth round. Um, he ended up falling when I did this mock, so very interesting um, to see if he even gets there. Um, but again, you know, filling needs, getting o alignment, it's really, really important. Um, and if, if the Giants end up doing what I'm, what I'm, you know, mocking here, um, on what I on the what I would do mock, I mean, it, it would be incredible. Um, it would be absolutely incredible because, um, you know, you're 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 getting some important important pieces, some really important needs, um, depth, you know, on the O line. If you can get the you know tackles late, and if they end up pan, panning out, I mean, that's it's really really incredible what you know what what that could lead to by by drafting well in the fourth fifth round. If you can get guys that can have an impact, even if it's a slight impact. You know, at this late in, in drafts, you're automatically going to be a good team. And, and you take a look at Buffalo and <clears throat> the way that they drafted their players. They they got some really good value in the later rounds, and that's why um, that's why teams, you know, ultimately end up being some of the top teams in the league when you can get value um, in these rounds and you're paying guys, you know, minimal amount of money, and then they end up panning out. So, you know, these guys are going to be projects at this point, but. Um, you know, they're guys who can, you know, step in if you need them to and, and you know, potentially do something. Um, and then at the next uh, pick in the fifth round, I got them taking Justin Schaefer, um, the Georgia guard. Um, this guy's a really highly talked about guard, um, and I personally really, really like him. Um, I think he, he's I, I think he's better than people, you know, make him seem. I think he's a guy who can kind of come in here and, and yeah, he's going to be a project, but I don't think he's as big of a project as people make him seem. And as some of these other guys um, in this draft class, I think he's arguably better than some of the guys that can even go in the third round. Um, I, I really am high on Justin Schaefer out of Georgia, um, the guard out of Georgia. So that's what I would do in the fifth round. And then with the sixth round pick, I would trade it back um, if you can. I mean, this isn't really a big deal. Um, if you can and get a future seventh round pick, um, then then go for it. If not, um, you you take uh, in the sixth round. You take uh, Jake Camarda, the kicker out of Georgia. Um, he is the the punter out of Georgia. Rather, he's uh, you know he can come in and and definitely be better than Riley Dixon, who's going to be cut. Of course, we have that uh, we have uh, Jamie uh, Gillen, who we brought in. Um, but I don't know what the future of this team is at the punter spot. So getting Jake Camarda would be uh, very, very nice. Now we're going to get into what I think uh, will happen. More of a realistic what will happen type mock. Um, and let's start off. And I, and I think the Giants are going to trade back. I really do. I think that, you know, we're going to start to see quarterbacks climb up draft boards. Teams that, you know, want quarterbacks... They're gonna they're gonna be willing to pay the price and trade up, and Joe Shane, you know, kind of talked about trading back. So, um, you know, it's definitely an interesting topic of conversation to be held, and I ult I ultimately think the Giants do end up trading back um, because there's good value later on, um, and I think what they do is trade fives in the New Orleans Saints, who are a team looking for a quarterback. They're at 18, so the Giants get a massive package. 18 overall, 50 overall, a first rounder next year, and a third rounder next year. Um, the trade went through, so definitely an interesting trade. I would be really happy if the Giants could land a package like this, but um, let's get into the mock. At number seven, Ike McQuanu, tackle North Carolina State. This guy's a beast. Um, if it's not Evan Neal, which it won't be because Evan Neal is going to go first, this is the guy. This is the tackle in this draft. If you're going to go tackle, this is the guy. Not Charles Cross. Uh, Ike McQuano is the guy. I mean, he is a beast. He's a stud. He can run block. He can pass protect. He has the whole package. And getting him at seven overall would be a great pick for the Giants. And if you could trade back, that would be amazing. Um, so I got... You know, I have a feeling they end up, t you know, Quanu ends up being a giant. So again, this is the this is the part of the mock that I think the part of the video of the mock that I think the Giants um, will go the route that they will go. So seven Ike and Quanu, and then at eighteen with the Saints pick after the trade back, Devin Lloyd, the linebacker out of Utah. I think the Giants end up, you know, I, I think they end up doing this, and they should take an offensive lineman, uh, whether that's tackle, center. 
and then best defensive player available. That's what I think they should do. That's what I think they will do, and that's what I would do. Um, so I think they go with Devin Lloyd, uh, the linebacker out of Utah. In my mock, I had us going Linderbaum and Dean. Here they got I got them going with Equanu and Lloyd. And either either way, it's 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 two really good players. So the Giants get Devin Lloyd at 18, and then in the second round with their pick. Daxton Hill, the cornerback out of Michigan. This is a guy who's fallen a little bit back behind um, draft boards. Um, he 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 was a guy who, you know, he was being mocked to potentially go back into the first round. Um, in this mock, he snuck into the second round. Um, and and the Giants are going to need help at the DB spot, um, in my opinion. So he would be a very nice pick um, for the Giants. Um, to kind of try and give us some, you know, help uh, in the secondary. We know that Joe Shane and the Bills and Don Wing Martindale and the Ravens, they built their defenses and teams behind the secondary. And, of course, uh, since the Giants have a good possibility of, you know, um, getting rid of Bradbury, um, you know, well, cutting Bradbury or potentially trading him if you can get anything, um, I think it makes sense to go with a cornerback or you know, pick up a quarterback um, in, in free agency. I think they're going to need to take a quarterback. And I think ultimately, I think it's probably likely they draft a quarterback somewhat early, whether that's Stingley Jr., who I love out of LSU, or Daxton Hill, or um, McCreary, or uh, any uh, guy or Lamb, any of these guys. I think the Giants ultimately, they might end up, I have a feeling they end up taking some uh, defensive back, maybe even a safety. It'll be interesting to see, but um, I got them going Daxon Hill, the cornerback out of Michigan. Um, and then with the second uh, second round pick, this one from the Saints, I got them taking the Boston College guard, Zion Johnson. I really like Zion Johnson. A lot of people are high on him, um, including myself. Uh, I think he's uh, I think he's a guy who... Um, he... he he he's a project, but at the same time isn't. It's it's kind of weird, um, but I think he's definitely a good, good you know interior offensive lineman, and I would really be happy with him, um, him and, and Raymond, um, who I ha- you know who I you know in when, in my uh, what I would do mock, uh, I had them taking him, but Zion Johnson's definitely a very good offensive lineman, so that's why I got them taken there. And then in the third round, 69 overall, Brian Asmoa, the linebacker out of Oklahoma. Of course, the Giants need help, uh, you know, in, with the linebacking spot, especially um, if they uh, choose to get rid of Bradbury, or sorry, Martinez, whether that's a trade or a cut. Uh, you save a lot of money there. So, you know, I, I could see them doubling down at the linebacker spot. Asmo is a guy who, you know, in this mock really fell back. So I ended up going with him because I, if he gets to the third round, not many teams are going to pass up on him. So he's a really good player. So at 69, I got the Giants taking Brian Asmoa. And then with the next third round pick, Jeremy Ruckert, tight end, Ohio State, talked about him um, in, you know, in the mock of what I would do. Giants need a tight end. They're probably going to draft him right here around the third round range. And Ruckert would be a perfect fit. He's a great player. Great uh, tight end, so that's who I got them taking there. And then 109 overall in the fourth round, Dylan Parham, uh, the guard out of Memphis. Continue to rack up the offensive lineman, whether that's guard, tackle, center. Um, we need help there. So I think the Giants you know, continue to add depth and, and uh, guys who can come in now. And with three more picks remaining in the fifth round, number 146, I got the Giants going Nolan Smith, the edge rusher out of Georgia. I think they take an edge rusher at some point in the draft, whether that's later on getting a project or maybe a guy like David Ajabo or um, if Kayvon uh, Thibodeau falls to the Giants, maybe they go that route earlier. Boy, Mafia, like I would, you know, know, it was a guy I would take, um, but he might not be in the third round, fourth round. Um, But ultimately, I think they take an edge rusher at some point, so... I think they go with it in the fifth round here. Um, earlier in the fifth round, Nolan Smith, the edge rusher out of Georgia. I really like Nolan Smith. And if you're getting any um, Georgia Bulldog, um, you know, I, I ultimately think, especially from the defensive side of things, I think that they're going to be a really, really nice player. Um, that defense was special. So getting any t- uh, piece to that defense would be uh, really, really nice. And it, the Giants always seem to go... go get a Georgia Bulldog, so I couldn't do one of these without them taking one. Um, so I think they, they take Nolan Smith 
the edge rusher out of Georgia early on in the fifth round. Um, so the Georgia Bulldog, Bulldog comes with Giants there, and then they pick again in 25 picks, and I think they go with another offensive lineman, the center out of Notre Dame, Jared Patterson. He's a guy who is really interesting. He's another interesting one because him and Alec uh, Lindstrom, they're they're uh, who's who's from Boston College, they're you know the the middle round centers. Um, they're, they're similar centers, and realistically, you're not really going to know who's better. They're both guys that, you know, they're going to kind of need a year or two, maybe even three to develop, so it'll be interesting. But uh, I think the Giants go that route in the fifth round, and then I think they, they take a, uh, a um, uh, in uh, the sixth round, they take a another running back, Zonovan Knight, North Carolina State. Uh, again, I think they do end up cutting Devontae Booker, so that would... Um, make sense to get your backup running back pay them a cheap amount um here and then as for punter i i, I don't think they take one um especially because they signed jamie uh gillen but i think they, they there will be a punter on the undrafted free agent market that i think they go out there and attack but guys that's all i got in this video it was a long one if you made it this far in the video man thank you so much for watching the video like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and leave a comment down below your thoughts on what I would do um, for the mock draft of what I would do and then what you think I think the Giants will do. Let me know. Leave your comments, all your thoughts down there in the comments section. And like I said, as always, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Let's go Giants.